Welcome to the fifth episode of Working and Living in Finland. This is the fifth week that we are together. And in this episode, we are going to talk about education in Finland. The life of a family toy who comes to Finland and at last. A successful international who had been residing in Finland for so long will get to chat with her and also get to know her roadmap. But let's get to learn about Finnish education a little bit together. While one country put men on the moon, another introduced a school reform that changed a small nation's fate once and for all. That was us, Finland. Children living north of the Arctic Circle in Lapland, and those whose home is in the bustling capital city of Helsinki in the south, all take part in one of the world's best education systems, regardless of their social background or mother tongue. Children in Finland are all given equal learning opportunities and get to learn at their own pace. Finland ranks high in both equality and innovations. To be a teacher in Finland, you need a master's degree. Our teachers are well qualified to adopt the latest digital innovations and pedagogical approaches in their teaching. But most importantly, our world-class learning outcomes are achieved through the joy of learning. One small step for children one giant leap for humankind. Welcome back. Here I am with Juha from Poyo Savon Te Toimisto, who joined us today. Welcome, Juha. Thank you. Nice it's, to be here. It's very nice to have you here, of course. And um, thank you for agreeing to come and give us some insight about Finland, especially Finland for families. As we have seen earlier, the the short intro of Finnish education, let's shift the topic to even uh, another insight of the education in Finland, lifelong learning in Finland. So if, for example, a person who is living in Finland and wants to change his or her career, what are the options for that person in Finland? Oh, you have loads of options because it it always depends on your history mm-hmm. and your background, where you're coming from, and uh, like we are promoting the lifelong learning. We like people to uh, take care of themselves the whole career. Mm-hmm. So, as long as you know that you want to change your career, you just ju- you just contact uh, any officials like their services or anywhere else, educational uh, providers. And um, there's always somebody to show you the way Mm. where you can proceed. So uh, let's imagine that today Juha wants to change his career. Mm. What would be the steps you would take? Um, First, I'd like to um, go through what I want. Mm-hmm. If I have a, some kind of a background like in, in engineering and then I decided I'd, I'd like to go to the medical school or something else and then I just um, go and find out what's available for me. Mm-hmm. And you can go to the internet, you can go to the web services and then you can actually call to the uh, local authorities yeah. and they will show you in which way you should go. Uh, thank you so much for bringing it up and, and sharing with us. And as you said, people can go to Tear Advisors. And for the audience, we have asked Paula, one Tear Advisor also, to let us know what are the lifelong learning process in Finland. And even more important, how would be the journey of a person, of a, of a newcomer in Finland? What should you do step by step? Let's hear it from Paula and learn it. Most of our new immigrant job seeker clients, they first need to learn Finnish in order to find a job here. It's much easier to get work if you know at least some Finnish. 
The Employment Office, the Etoimisto, offers free full-time Finnish language classes for our clients. And if our classes are full, we can inform our clients of other options. Another um, service which we have, which might be useful, is work trial. And work trial means that um, you find an unpaid internship in an organization that interests you. And hopefully you learn Finnish there. You increase your networks in Finland and perhaps even land a job. It's also very effective to combine part-time Finnish language studies with our work trial, where you learn grammar at school and then put everything to use at a work environment. We also have a service which is called pay subsidy. And this means that the employment office refunds 30% of your salary costs back to the employer. The refund can be even bigger depending on how long time you have been unemployed. And um, apart from the Finnish language classes, the employment office has other types of training programs, which can be found on our website, tuomarkkinatori.fi. These are usually in Finnish, but there might be some in English. Typ typically these are entrepreneurship trainings, and there might be some programs in IT or in international business. And if you are not sure at all what your career path in Finland is going to be like, then you can also book an appointment to meet our career psychologist who will help you to find your direction in Finland. If you want to change your career, try something new which you haven't done before. Um, there are many different types of study programs, um, sh shorter ones, longer ones, um, in different schools and universities. And um, if you are an unemployed job seeker in TE Toimista, it's probably best to check with us, us first before you enroll to see how it would affect your unemployment benefit. Um, some studies means that your unemployment benefit can be increased. And during some studies, you don't qualify for unemployment benefit at all. So it's always best to check first. Welcome back. Now that you have heard from Paula and you learned the steps of a foreigner who comes to Finland, let's go and talk to one of these internationals who came as a family tie almost a decade ago, Ricardo Patino, a prestigious company in Copio as a director, and one of these directors, the creative director, is Ricardo. So, let's get to see what led him to this success and to his path. As I told you, Ricardo is here with me. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. You were me. surprised. That, yeah. well, why so fast? <laughs> I, I already <laughs> introduced you. That's why. <laughs> but welcome to the show. Um, it's so nice to have you. But you. Um, uh, let's go to the topic so fast, mm -hmm. you know, with no further ado. Ricardo, let's let us know, what was the key to your success? By success, I mean that you found your path, even though you came as a family to yourself. So would you share it with us? I, I have uh, I have something that I call my survival kit. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has three very important uh, things that I hold highly as my personal values, uh, which are empathy, mm -hmm. adaptation, and grit. Grit meaning sisu, if we were to use yeah, a Finnish-related yeah. word. Never giving up and so forth, yes. yeah. So it's, it's that perseverance that, that we all need at some point in our lives. So. And when I came to Finland, uh, I mean, I did this already in the United States when I developed my, career, my professional career. And then once again in Finland, mm -hmm. when I moved in uh, for, uh, through family ties mm -hmm. to the country, I'm married to a beautiful Savo woman. We've been together for over 25 years and we have three beautiful children. God bless you all. Thank so, you. Uh, Ricardo, <laughs> um, if you want to tell me about an experience or, for example, what you have witnessed along the way for your own uh, path and also uh, the other people who were among the communities that Correct. you had been through in these 10 years. Could you share a glimpse of it with us, please? Well, you mentioned, uh, I mean, you asked uh, prior to, to this part of the interview that uh, 
what what is the path that people should actually take on when they move on uh, move on to this life here in Finland? I think the uh, the uh, the integration program offered by the government is like the best bet for you because it gives you the basis and it gives you the, the ground for you to understand a little bit more of the culture, the taxation system, the language. I think those are those are things that we shouldn't skip if we move on to Finland to live here permanently, mostly if you have a family. And um, I, I had the opportunity uh, to study uh, in the integration program. Uh, study uh, so what? Study. Uh, the, the, the language? All different or? subjects, yes. There was like social studies and then language. And then okay. we have practices and we learn how to cook. And uh, there's, really? it was fantastic, yes. Okay. There is many, many good things about that program. Okay. That all immigrants, mm. those who plan to stay and live here and develop their lives here, should really use. Um, you told me an interesting story about the fact that when you were going through the courses and mm-hmm. so forth, there were like you were thirty three people, and out of thirty three, only three of them got the job. Actually, we got a job. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so would you share? your experience through that time with us well uh, there is uh see there is a thing and i uh, i i became an advocate of a change in the narrative mm. within that school environment we were we were immigrants uh, from family ties there were also uh, immigrants that were seeking uh, asylum so we came from all backgrounds and all walks of life and you are susceptible to to gossip and toxic mm. narrative so what I try to do was encouraging people to look at it from a different point of view. Hmm. And the narrative was around that of oh, Finland is it's a very close society. There the language is too hard. Hmm. There is no jobs here. I I will tend to disagree with that. Oh, you disagree so with that. I disagree with that. Why? I think there is a, there is a barrier that is emotional more than real. And the problem with that toxicity, with that language, with that narrative, is that it it puts the blockade even before the opportunities. Exactly. So I would like to, and every opportunity I have with my survival kick that I just mentioned to you, mm-hmm. to help change that narrative. So, so, so you mean that when people keep chanting and gossiping and talking, and it's all about negative things that uh, might be true or might not be true, mm-hmm. it will block their opportunities before they come? How could you elaborate on oh, that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, difficulties exist. I mean, circumstances are difficult when you move on to a new country and you're, we, uh, you're trying to be part of it uh-huh. and succeed as a person and as a, as a family person and as a professional. Mm-hmm. So, so those difficulties exist, but if you let those difficulties take over your life, then you become paralyzed. And if you have a toxic narrative around it, it's even more paralyzed. Indeed. So the key for your uh, success and finding the right path for yourself at this point might be the fact that you close your ears to Absolutely. all these negativity and all these um, stereotypes that people keep saying. And you just focused on yourself, your skills, and found your path. That's it. Perfect. T- take the tools that you're given, utilize the tool that you're given, and and really, really break a little bit out of that mold of mm-hmm. of being an immigrant and not having opportunities. Thank you so much, Ricardo. As uh, you know, that we have Yuha also with us here, so we'll go back to Yuha and hear his thoughts about what Ricardo just shared with us. Stay with us. Here we are again with Yuha. So Yuha, what do you think about what just uh, Ricardo shared with us? Uh, I liked that he's like Crete, he's Sisu, how he actually came in here 25 years ago. And um, I admire how he actually proceed and make her, make him a like brilliant career. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's a valuable member of the society now. And I just hope that everybody who is coming over here, they have this Finnish sisu. Indeed, in that idea. Actually, um, um, just to uh, uh, say it, he, he, he was married 25 years ago. 
with a fade. And that's why I think the Sisu comes from. And then he came like about 10 years ago here. So the Sisu was built inside him maybe. For, for, for those who don't know what Sisu is, I must say, Sisu is a Finnish word which refers to not giving up, going hard for what you believe and believe in yourself. So, Juha, uh, it's good that we have borrowed even the Sisu talk into our discussion. We have borrowed the opportunities that people might have and they have to go to the see the advisors. If you want to say, say your, um, let's say, last advice for the audience who are watching it, what would you have to say to them? I would say that come over here, try. It won't be easy, but it would be good for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, um, let's say that you can focus on yourself, your skills, and that's all matters. Don't get into the trap of nagging my fellow internationals because that's not taking you anywhere. Instead, focus on yourself, on your skills, and whoever is not hiring you is a loss for them. Trust me. Now, let's go and watch the roadmap of our next guest and learn about her. And after that, we'll be here to talk with her as well. See you there. A French immigrant who teaches Finnish language in university level, Julian, originally from France, she had two reasons to move to Finland. She had the opportunity to move to Finland as she was about to marry a Finn but she decided to first land a job and then move. 21 years ago, when there was no web translation, not many online services like today, she made her choice. I won't move to Finland unless I land a job first. As an English teacher in Paris, she had a hard time through her application process. After obvious many rejections, she finally got a green light from an employer in Finland and her story began as an English teacher. She continued her career as junior and senior high school teacher in Kartula. Up until the time she was hired by Savonia University of Applied Sciences, where she teaches English and also Finnish language in Kuopio City. At this point, Julian has experienced the working life and also the family life in Finland as a teacher, as a spouse, and also she's a mother. I won't move just as a spouse, but we'll find a job first and then move to Finland. Said by Julian 21 years ago before moving to Finland. Welcome back. Here we are with Julian. As we have seen her roadmap, she is a Finnish teacher who is from France. And she also teaches English. Julian, how how did you make it? <laughs> Welcome to the show. And just let me know how did you? Well, come uh, with I me. I would say that I'm an English teacher mm -hmm. who is also a Finnish a Finnish teacher. teacher. Maybe indeed. maybe that way. So it would so, be so an English teacher who yeah. teaches Finnish also, in, yeah. in university. Yes, but she's correct. from France. Yeah, <laughs> so many nationalities here. So, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like so many languages and so forth. But Sometimes people are a little bit surprised, but yeah, mm. that's how it is. This is this is this is surprising, but amazingly surprising, uh, because because oh, you know you know quite well languages. Let's say mm. English and French. Then you're also now teaching Finnish. Yeah. So you lived in Finland for 21 years. Yes. Mm. And it is very important to acknowledge that 21 years ago there were not similar services even web translation and so forth in Finland so that she could uh, apply. Am I right? Definitely. So I didn't have uh, internet at home. Okay. Uh, that was too expensive. Um, so I had internet at work. So during my lunch hours or after work, then, uh, well, everyone. So uh, you would apply during that time? Yeah. From Paris to yes. Finland? Yeah, yeah. So how I was the experience? I started looking, uh, I surfed the web. Well, you know, uh, I knew Ranska, so French. I knew Englanti, English. And I knew the words for, the couple of words for teacher. Mm -hmm. So I just went to the um, TE Palavelo website, like the uh, employment agency, which was, I think, back then, Mola Pistefi. Mm -hmm. And 
the few websites that there were, and I wrote those keywords and... and you kept on applying? Yeah, and then I sent my applications. So, so uh, how did you land the job? Uh, <laughs> Well, uh, the first one I didn't land, uh, almost landed, but no. And uh, the second one, uh, well, as I told you when, when we chatted earlier, it took only one person to believe that uh, this might sound crazy to some people, that a French uh, person is coming to teach English in Finnish countryside, mm -hmm. but um, he thought it was a good idea, and mm -hmm. uh, I'm really happy he did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how I landed my first job. Uh, very good that you brought it up that it takes one person to believe that you can do the exactly. job, exactly, and the rest will be the history. Yeah. Uh, so we are we are comparing the situation mm. from 21 years ago until now. That Finland, uh, I mean, not Finland, the tools yeah. were not as rich as today. Of course. Well, you didn't have smartphones with applications, uh, mm. uh, all the uh, ways to get a job. So what was the key that you could make it even back then? Well, just simply because I thought that, uh, yeah, that's possible. <laughs> it was not the tool, it was the, the uh, little maybe hint of uh, craziness, I don't know, or, or <laughs> fantasy that, yeah, I, I, wanna I want to get a job, so I, I'm trying and let's see what happens and, and that's it. So uh. just... So just you, you just believe that you deserve this yeah. opportunity? I don't know if back then I thought I deserved it, but I thought that I can try. I'm capable of it. Mm. Uh, I, I'm someone with an attitude that, uh, <laughs> that I try not to focus on the difficulties, but mm. on the uh, thing in sight. Uh -huh. and, uh, and then, well, yeah. You know why I said this? Because mm. I remember that you said it to me before mm. um, that that if you don't think that you deserve it mm. then why should someone else yeah. think that you deserve it you know yeah. to, to get this yeah. opportunity or yeah. so yeah. forth definitely yeah so so this was something because that you i learned from yeah. you personally of course you need you need to prove people that uh, they can take a chance with you mm -hmm, exactly yeah. so as you know t uh, today in this episode we are having the uh, mostly the talk is on family okay. life in finland mm -hmm. finland for the families and you as you said you are married also with a person from Finland. Yep. So you also experience the family life in Finland and you yep. have a, you're also a mother. Yep. So could you share your experience uh, uh, in, in terms of not career, but the focus is on family at this point? Yeah. Well, when I came to Finland, uh, so in 2001, uh, my now husband uh, was divorced with two kids. Mm -hmm. So I started discovering family life with them. Okay. So I discovered elementary school with them, uh, uh, kindergarten, how it was, and uh, there were some things which were really surprising for me that the, um, some kids took the bus themselves to go home or to go to school, age seven. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they didn't do it, but some kids did, depending on where they lived. And uh, after school, uh, they met with friends, or it seemed so carefree. Uh, wh why was it something surprising for you then? Well, in France, you take your kids to uh, that age, at least, mm. <laughs> to the uh, school gate, mm -hmm. and then you fetch them from there. Uh huh. So, oh, you're referring to the fact that Finland is like it was surprising for you that it is this, uh, you know, like the parents had this confidence. Yeah, that you're the confident that nothing's going to happen to your nothing. kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I just got it, yeah. and and. Yeah, this is this is I have seen also the kids like they are five years old, six. They they're yeah. riding the bike even, yeah. and and uh, it's it's amazing even yeah. to me. Yeah. But also you said you went through the kindergarten, mm. elementary, and mm. so forth with them. And uh, as we saw also in your mm. roadmap, your first job, uh, I mean, like the continuous of the job mm. that you have had, you were in a junior and senior high school. Yes. So you have been into Finnish education. Yes. Many families when they want to move, mm. they have this worry for their children that now moving to a new country, what mm. would happen to them in terms of education, mm. school, and so forth. What could you share in this regard with our audience? Well, that's uh, maybe a difficult question somehow, but... Mm -hmm. uh, Your witness, what you yeah. have experienced so far. Anyway, everyone can go to school <laughs> here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's already something. Mm -hmm. uh, you can trust that the school system is working. Yeah. Uh, not always like you want it to be. I'm a teacher, so, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, it works. Uh, you know that uh, your kids are going to be looked after. Mm -hmm. You know they're going to receive an education. Uh, there, There is this, like, easiness or 
it's easy going, it's mostly carefree. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also free of charge. And free, so <laughs> carefree and free, <laughs> yeah. yes. And that's that's very important. Yeah, for, 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 for example, from my point perspective, mm. from where I come from, uh, it is quite a stressful situation mm. when it comes to the school age and even worse when it comes to the uh, university mm. because then there are so much of costs yes. that people have yeah. to pay. Uh, we have to also save up if they are going to a private, even university mm. yeah. or uh, so many other procedures that the school yeah. life is not as relieving as I'm witnessing here. And, and the material, everything is free here. And until the c they get out of uh, compulsory education, I see. Yeah. So, so, so technically, they don't have to worry about the costs at all. And no, I, I was really surprised with my first job uh, in in junior high school. Mm -hmm. I was told, yeah, remember to give a pencil and notebooks to the students. <laughs> so like even the pencil. And yeah. The, 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 the yeah. 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 I Some kids that. had their own pens, and, and but mostly we, we gave them all for free. Well, of course, we lent the books. Nowadays, mm -hmm. uh, we use a lot of online material, mm -hmm. so, but mm -hmm. there are still some school books. Yeah. And we gave them the paper and pen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Of course, um, um, uh, y now you are teaching in a university yeah. level, and, and you're referring to it's what different. was yeah. it? Yeah, of I don't course, know how compulsory yeah. education. Yeah. 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 I, I don't even know how it is, but yeah. we are just, mm. uh, just for the fact that, for the, for the audience, mm. I'm just mentioning yeah. that, uh, we are just saying in this episode with Julian, Julian's experiences yes. and what she witnessed, uh, especially that she had experienced this uh, uh, the family life mm. in Finland mm. and also as a teacher in s junior and senior high school as a university teacher. Mm. But um, what do you have to say? You, you know, you, you, you said you have a kid here mm. also, like um, the, uh, a daughter. A daughter. Mm. Yes. Mm. Um, what do you have to say about... Uh, the 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 place of women in Finland as well. Mm. This is something that yeah. um, very important because you 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 have the daughter. She is being, she's living in this society. And how mm. do you feel about it and why? Um, well, now she's eighteen years old. Mm -hmm. um, at again, I'm going to use the uh, same expression like carefree. Of mm -hmm. course, you always worry as a mother for your kids, yeah. and then okay, but. Let's say that in Finland, uh, well, let's say that I, I let her do things when she was younger uh, without having to worry. And maybe uh, she wouldn't have been able to exactly do it the same way uh, if we had lived in France, for example. Mm -hmm. um, because and 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 she of course society is changing everywhere. Yeah. And so my idea of France is what it was uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> before I moved to Finland 21 Indeed. years ago. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, when I share experience with my my friends uh, from yeah. there, that there is this again like uh, a young woman can believe she has the same chances uh, and at least opportunities uh, in life than uh, a young guy. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's it equality it is. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. that, that is yeah. going on in here. Yeah. And uh, something that I also wanted, uh, that you mentioned, mm. that you let her to do things herself. Yeah. Does it, is it because, because we know that Finnish culture is somehow is built on being independent, mm. you know, individually. Mm. That, that also the Sisu comes from. We also talk mm. about the... Um, Having to learn... E exactly. Skills so yourself. Does it come that you let her... Is it because of the cultural values in here? Or um, did it affect... Well I think it's a combination of things. Mm -hmm. uh, mm. uh, my values, mm -hmm. maybe, in life. But also because where I live uh, allows... Yeah, I mean, like you can trust. Yeah, I can. Th that's the whole exactly. thing. As you said, there the kids would go yeah. in the streets, like to the school, yeah. by bus. Yeah. So they they yeah. trust yeah. that it 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 works. It yeah. happens. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you for being with us in this episode as well. I must uh, go on empathy mood because we have run out of time. But uh, we, l we learned from uh, Julian's roadmap, her experiences. And uh, once again, thank you. Thank you uh, for inviting me. We f for sure, we would have LinkedIn live uh, question and answer uh, from in, in October. Uh, it has been so agreed that most of this will be in October. So you could ask your questions and we will go through the answers during the LinkedIn live question and answer. Have a good rest of the evening. See you next week.